try and intervene in the foreign exchange markets to ensure that the impact doesn't hit their domestic economies. What is a Ponzi scheme? A Ponzi scheme is a fraudulent investment scheme that promises high returns for investors with little or no risk. Sounds too good to be true, right? That's because it is. In a legitimate investment scheme, the money invested is used to build wealth, typically through low-risk ventures like stock or real estate portfolios. Over time, this generates enough income to pay the investor back their initial investment plus some profit. A Ponzi scheme, on the other hand, promises massive returns quickly. How does it accomplish this? Instead of using the money invested to build wealth, a Ponzi scheme simply brings in more investors to pay off the previous investors. And because these new investors have also been promised large returns, the scheme must then find an even bigger group of investors to pay them off. All the while the creators of the scheme are skimming cash from each group of investors. Because a Ponzi scheme doesn't generate any wealth itself, it must constantly bring in larger and larger groups of investors to keep functioning. Eventually, no more new investors can be found, or large numbers of previous investors all cash out at the same time, and the scheme collapses in on itself. By this time, the perpetrators of the scheme have siphoned off tremendous amounts of money for themselves, while the investors are left out of pocket and out of luck. Without a fixed link to gold, the U.S. Treasury has been able to borrow and spend as much money as it wanted. When the U.S. government needs money, it takes out a loan with the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve prints the currency required for the loan, and in return, receives an IOU from the U.S. Treasury. These IOUs are called government bonds. With the money provided from these loans, or bonds, the U.S. government pays its bills and obligations. Meanwhile, the U.S. Treasury and the Federal Reserve work closely together to sell these bonds at auction, where foreign central banks, pension funds, and even individuals buy these U.S. government loans. And why wouldn't they? Loaning money to the U.S. government is virtually a risk-free investment. But if the loans are spent on bills and paying off previous loans, where does the government get the money to pay back the current loan and the interest that is charged on it? Is investing in a U.S. government bond simply one small part in a giant Ponzi scheme? The Federal Reserve System is definitely a Ponzi scheme. There, there's no question about it. They go through the appearance of lending money to the governments, and the governments agree to pay back the money plus interest. And uh, so this money comes into being, they create it just for that purpose, they give it to the governments. Didn't exist before that, you understand. Central banks just make it out of nothing and click a few keys on a keyboard of a computer and the treasury of the United States government now has another trillion dollars that it can spend. That's where that money came from. And so uh, that creates a liability on the part of the federal government to pay it back plus interest. Now think about that, plus interest. Well, when it comes time to pay it back, plus the interest, they can't pay it back, and they certainly can't pay it back, plus interest, too. So what they do is they borrow more to cover the original loan, plus the interest, and then by that time, Congress said, wants more money anyway. So the, the debt just keeps going up and up and up and up. Under the current monetary system, we borrow all of our currency into existence, and we promise to pay it back, plus interest. If you borrow the very first dollar into existence, and that's the only ex dollar that exists on the planet, but you promise to pay it back, plus another dollar's worth of interest, where do you get the second dollar? The answer is you have to borrow that. It's a Ponzi scheme because you can never pay it off. It always requires that we go deeper into debt. Since 1971, the United States has been running trade deficits with the rest of the world meaning we've been buying a lot more products from the rest of the world than they have been buying from us. The Japanese and Koreans sell us cars and electronics. The Middle East sells us oil. And the Chinese sell us seemingly everything on our Walmart shelves. The U.S. pays for these products with U.S. dollars, and everyone is happy. But if countries were to convert these U.S. dollar profits back into their own currencies, their currencies would rise in value, making their economies less desirable to trade with. Instead, 
Countries invest their dollar profits by buying U.S. government bonds. So countries around the world sell their goods to the U.S. in exchange for U.S. dollars, which have been borrowed through the Federal Reserve, creating IOUs. And countries then loan their U.S. dollar profits back to the U.S. by buying more IOUs. The money from these loans 